Hi, Fifth Hour, and welcome back to our channel. Hi, how are ya? So, we're talking about prohibition and organized crime. So, we're gonna get started on prohibition, right? Right. So, this prohibition started by the 18th Amendment, and they wanted to do this because they thought there were reasons for poverty, crime, and violence. This led to um, smuggling alcohol. People who did that were known as bootleggers. It was a lot easier for, for mobsters and bootleggers to do their business <laughs> in big cities, as such as... Chicago? Thank you. <laughs> mobsters got local gangs to protect them from rivals and pay off cops and politicians. Local gangs, who were often very isolated from each other because they, were, they wanted to protect their own land, became more involved because the mobsters became smart and started to get the local gangs to, thank you, to protect them from rivals and pay off cops and politicians. As more money started rolling in, they had to get smarter, which means they became more organized in how they did their crimes. When before they were all very isolated from each other and solving their problems by killing each other, they now started making deals with each other to maximize their profits. Speakeasies were um, a place where you could go to like secretly to get alcohol. Like it was bars, but like secret under like behind buildings that was like easy to get to. To not get in trouble for. And for that, you needed private. It'd be private. You would unlicensed, so you like wouldn't be able to like detect where it is and then you, not everyone could get in it's only for people who would know about it like not everyone could get in because it's only people that, like would talk about it because they can't put it in like newspapers or something because it can't be published like out in the public um you need like a secret password so people have like handshakes or like knocks or like sayings and stuff and um they would normally have like bounces at the door to, like check to make sure like who would get in and who couldn't get in and then they'd have speakeasy cards so you could um for recognition and like identification like how you have ids for like bars and parties and you know okay and then help with um interracial relationships and help them come together more and this also was part of the cotton club which had a big deal to do with that and then also, women started drinking a lot more and smoking, and this allowed them to be part of bootlegging. The flapper culture rose because of speakeasies when women started to have more fun, like smoking, drinking, and dancing in public with, you guessed it, I don't know if she did it. She went there. Speakeasies also became a big part of Al Capone's business. Shocker. Hmm. Wow! Al Capone made around six. Al Capone made around sixty. Al Capone made around sixty million dollars by selling liquor illegally. That was just his profits. And Capone, early in um Capone's work, he met his mob mentor Johnny Torrio. Torrio introduced him to the gangster Frankie Yale and began to work for him. Also, as like a bartender or like a bouncer. As a bartender and a bouncer. And his nickname was Scarface because when he insulted a woman, the guy, his brother, her brother, <laughs> slashed him along the face. And then Toyo left, was leaving Capone by himself, and then he ended up going more publicly so people more, knew more about him and started gaining more money from it. Also, he was part of bootlegging, prostitution, and gambling, and that's how he earned some of his other money. His side hustle. Yeah. Like but, Mr. Uh, Blaine. In 1929, a rival gang of, of Al Capone, George Bugs Moran's gang, was transporting alcohol when a group of police officers showed up, and they... They were patting them down and checking them, which is usually is when you would often try to pay off the cops. So before they got to try to pay them off, they put their heads against the walls to pat them down, walked away, and gunned them down. Which all the time, it wasn't really police officers, it was Al Capone's men. Which resulted in a gang war. Which resulted in the massacre of the gang. Gang gang. 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 <laughs> now we are going to reenact the Valentine's Day Massacre. Ready?
Dissipate. It helped dissipate. No, I don't know what it means. So it means it slowly helped, dissolve. It helped. Just trying to. Okay, fine. Whatever. It's not like I did the vocab homework. When there's too much drama at school, all you gotta do is walk away. <laughs>